Hello, this is Danny Doyle, and I am here with another episode of Fire Emblem. Uh, the tops, the bottoms, the switches, the aces, uh, not the babies, we don't talk about them. And today we are doing uh, the game that, it didn't start Fire Emblem shipping, but it certainly brought it back and made it much more prominent. Uh, and in many ways, it is very appropriate for this series because of all the shipping and therefore topping and bottoming that happens in this game uh not only within the fan base but genuinely within the gameplay like they made it a gameplay mechanic so uh i have with me an esteemed expert in awakening lore uh and that is julia chalfi julia would you like to Tell me a little bit about, uh, or not me, but tell everyone else a little bit about yourself, your channel, what you do, all that fun stuff. Hi, I am, uh, oh fuck, my voice is wavering. <laughs> I am, uh, Julia Kyoto, not Chalfie anymore, and I make a lot of Fire Emblem content. I vastly, I really, really like Awakening, Three Houses, um, FE6. And I like doing things like modded runs of games, trying out different versions of things, not just playing vanilla. I like doing challenge runs like Iron Man's or some other goofy ideas I've been planning. And uh, yeah, you can find a link to all my wacky shit in the description below. I'm sorry about that. I got your name mixed up from previously, so I'm, I'm sorry about that, Julia. I oh, know, you're fine. You're um, fine. But yes, please go check out Julia's channel. It will be linked below. Uh, and at the time of recording, I believe Project Thabies and FE6 are what's currently ongoing. But uh, who knows when this gets uploaded. Uh, many, many eons in the future that will probably be something else uh, which you can see in the end card as well to figure out uh, what she's up to. But... Uh, I did want to give a couple of disclaimers before we dive into the cast. Um, the first is that people we've put in baby tier are just people that uh, one or both of us are not super comfortable talking about, either because of their appearance, personality, they seem uh, like they are meant to be a child or childlike in some aspect. I know that like canonically, uh, for example, Na and Naoi are like 10,000 years old, but they are designed to look like they are six, uh, as opposed to like Tiki, who is also 10,000 years old, but is designed to look like a child. So that's sort of the difference there. Um, it is just a comfort level thing talking about them and sort of this sort of topic. Uh, and I also feel the need to add the, you know, disclaimer. These are all just our head cannons. It is meant to be a fun exercise. Uh, we are not prescriptive uh, as much as we may play it up in the video of like, you need to believe this. Um, just know that you are allowed to disagree with us. And if your head cannons are different from our head cannons, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, at the end of the day, part of the fun and draw to the series is just the many different ways in which people can relate to and interpret these characters. Um, with that out of the way, Julia, uh, you are Miss Awakening. Uh, would you like to decide which of these scrunklies we're going to start with? Hmm. If I had to pick one... Hmm. Let's do an easy one. Um, Lucina. Lucina. Uh, I don't really use Lucina um, that much in runs. I've used her in a couple, because uh, you can, if you marry Robin and Krom, you can get Gale Force on her pretty easy. But, like, I haven't really dug into her supports, because I'll be honest, the Gen 2 kind of turns me off, so this is going to be your wheelhouse. All right, so um, uh, Lucina's a top. Um, in her Brady support, she forces him to submit, and I don't think I have to add anything else to that. Well, would that then put him in the bottom pretty squarely, or...? Definitely. Um, in his supports with Severa, he's essentially, like, conned into being uh, her bottom bitch, essentially. Her, like, her, her, like, just submissive little Discord kitten? Exactly. He buys her a bunch of shit from their exclusive club. Oh! And she nothing about it the whole time. So, like, Findom and whatnot. Yeah, pretty much. Um, on the topic of Severa, Severa's a brat. 
So, but where would that land her? Like a bratty bottom or a bratty switch? Because it sounds like she does she, some she, amount she of like domination she, type deal. I would definitely call her a switch as well. Like definitely, she just seems like the kind of person who just at one moment she is literally like beating the shit out of someone and then the next she needs to be tied up. Like it is a craving for her. She needs to because of mommy issues and all that jazz that she has associated with her character. She's definitely a lot more of a um very flippant character depending on how she wants to be at the time. I don't think I've ever used her, so I've never seen her <laughs> supports. Um, so I, I'll take your word for it. Uh, I'm assuming that there is a support where she literally gets tied up <laughs> um, <laughs> because awakening no. riders are not cowards. Uh, not to my knowledge, no, but if there is one, I can- <laughs> I would know about it, I'm pretty sure. Oh my. Um, oh my, indeed. Um, um, starting off strong, starting off strong. Uh, <laughs> uh so, the other protagonist of the game, uh, Krom, I don't think Krom knows what's sexy. Yeah, I think he's ace. I think Krom is ace. Um, I think he's- I mean, I, I wouldn't say ace, I just think he doesn't- know what it is but he's definitely a bottom oh you think he's just like the yeah, oblivious he, bottom the oblivious he almost has like a heart attack confessing to robin where he's like oh i'm coming on like a wyvern in heat and he is very very <laughs> he is so oblivious during it um he basically walks in uh of course there's all the romance between um i guess the female avatar in this case where he walks in on female robin and he's like oh shit you're naked and basically just disintegrates into a puddle the same thing happens between robin walking in on him and it's a it's a stupid support chain but he is he's definitely bottoming his other candidates are also characters that i strongly consider tops which we'll get to when we cover them like his potential marriage candidate so yeah he is definitely um definitely like an oblivious bottom well, and I think that kind of lines up with my personal favorite marriage candidate for him, Frederick, and like their interactions where Frederick just like puts up all of the um, like Poor naked Crom posters to inspire the troops, and Crom mm -hmm. has like that really shy, uh, embarrassed reaction. Which, like, granted, part of that is probably just the invasion of privacy of like, oh, you have, uh, <laughs> you you have. Um, Posted my naked honest. body for everyone and you didn't get permission, like, and he's obviously upset about that. But I think the mm -hmm. way in which he sort of, like, shrinks down, uh, while still obviously being mad at Frederick, feels kind of like, um, kind of bottom behavior, I guess I would say. Um, in the, oh. in the more demure, uh, in the more just sort of like, oh my god. Uh, but on that note, I think that Frederick is asexual. I think that Frederick just didn't understand uh the intimacy of the nudity posters uh and he literally was just like yes i am inspired by Krom's naked body so everyone else must be as well i think that i think that is definitely true i think frederick has his duty and it's like one of those things like in his supports with cordelia this is funny um they both agree that Krom is more important to them than each other yeah and they bond over that for their marriage right Yes, it's like literally in their S support, Cordelia's like, there will always be someone I love more, and Frederick's like, yes, I know, I have the same man in mind. And, and I'm just saying something, I don't know how um, Frederick managed to do it, but he somehow managed to see Krom's naked body enough to um, make a pornography of him. And I just think that's kind of interesting to think about. I mean, I would say because they're, well, I mean, either it's because they're boyfriends, uh, which is my preferred answer, um, or it could just be, like, artist's interpretation. Like, he's just like, yes, I assume Krom is this well endowed. <laughs> uh, yeah, Krom has a nine-inch wonder in the mind of Frederick. Um, on the or topic whatever. of the third member of what should just be, you know, the, the trouble of the century... Because, uh, you know, they both admit that they like Krom more than each other. They should just, like, get over it, ask him to join the trouble, and then all live happily ever after. Where do you yeah. think Cordelia is? Because I feel, like, obviously she does the, um, uh, I hate this word, um, 
the internet would describe her behavior as like simping. Uh, it's more of like the distant longing, I guess, would be a better term yeah. for that. Um, she, she but she has work. that, which is more associated with bottom, but I don't think it always is, right? I think that um, she leans heavily into top. There's one person she would bottom for. Like we are talking get down on her knees like anything that this person wants and that'd be crom but like she oh but it would like be like that tweet like her bottoming for crom would be like that tweet where it's like are you really a switch or are you so much of a bottom that you top your partner because they want you to um yeah, and the thing that. is that it's not that she's so much of a bottom that she tops because the partner wants to she's normally a top but she's so much of a bottom for crom that she tops him and it loops back around to topping but it yeah. is because of how much of a bottom for him specifically she is and so to the outside observer it just looks consistent like she's the top in all of her relationships but like because Krom is just has that big bottom energy um it's 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 the bottom of the bottom dynamic I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I think personally, I do like Crom and uh, Cordelia as a ship, mostly because um, I like Cordelia and I want her to be happy, and I do think that they would be a fantastic pairing. It conflicts with another personal favorite of mine, that um, well, Lucina and Severa. So I do prefer that. You know, I think I do prefer Lucina and Severa over Crom and Cordelia, but they definitely have that dynamic of Cordelia would do anything Crom would want. Um, her to do, and if she's not with Krom, she's definitely, like, pegging the fuck out of whoever the fuck she's marrying. I mean, you say it conflicts with Lucina Severa, but if we do the, uh, if we do the, the polyamorous truple, then it doesn't necessarily, because we can just do Empreg Frederick, like, and then by blood, Lucina is not actually related to Severa. That is a the serial image that's been implanted in my mind. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, dear viewers. This is what you get for subscribing to the Danny Doyle YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> Let's do another one. Uh, Lauren is canonically in a submission. <laughs> what? Wait, what? I need you to elaborate on that. Okay, so in his supports with... Uh, God, I'm gonna have to mention Noir. Uh, let me find these. Hold on, where is it? Uh, Lauren says, I don't think I've ever been tongue-lashed quite so thoroughly before, and in truth, it had set my heart racing. I was agog over seeing you, True, for the first time. I nearly fell right there and then. That... Like he, is con he is canonically into being berated. That is, um... I mean, I can't conflict with the canon. I, I can't contradict the canon. So, that is, uh... I guess that's where we'll leave him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say for him. It's just canon that he likes being talked down to. No, no, I mean, again, who am I to conflict with the canon? Who am I to conflict with the canon? Um, speaking of the canon, Krom's canon boyfriend, Robin, uh, or Rafle, uh, depending, where would you put him? Hmm. I think I would put him in Switch. He kind of seems like that... He seems like he'd be Ooh. very generous. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Like he—he he seems like like he constantly talks about like love and all this like forging bonds between each other. He seems like the kind of person who would really do anything that you know his lover wanted him to do. It also kind of fits with the avatar nature of Robin and like. I get that he's less of a blank slate than some other avatars like Chris, um, but he is still at the end of the day, like in that position where his status as a character is a lot of what you put into him. And as a result, like Switch just being able to fulfill multiple roles feels appropriate. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, where does your heart guide you to next? Eeny, meeny, money, mo. Um, um, I think that Anna is a switch. Because her entire personality is money, money, money. And I think if you're, like, with Anna, 
she's going to do whatever she she's going to do whatever you want her to do for like top dollar. Is that switch or is that sex neutral? Ace though is the question. Like, I mean, I, if, think, I mean, I think. Oh, that's a good point because she might not care about it. She just, you know, she's kind of there for you know that the the dollar ding or whatever you want to call it. She's there for the money. Yeah, she's willing to you know participate in sex work as it were, um, but only because of the money, not because of the sex. Uh, and that's her only relationship with sex, um, necessarily. Yeah. I'd say that. Um, another thing I was thinking of is, um, let's see. I think I would put uh, Muriel in Ace, Ace as well, because I just don't think that she um, really cares that much about it. I think she's much more focused on her work and stuff with magic. She's all about studying. Um, I think she would probably have sex to study it, like on a fairly regular basis. Mm. Um, but not out of any desire of her own, uh, like yeah, literally like, um, just like, oh, this is what sex is. Oh, let me check in again and see what sex is. Oh, it hasn't changed. Okay. Um, mm. like th the only support Today? chain I've seen of hers is the stall one where she wants to like analyze why he's so fucking mid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so um, I get the I idea that seen... she just like analyzes everything and she's like a researcher. Yeah, she, um, like, canonically, if you pair her with Vate, she's like, hmm, yes, getting into a marriage will allow me to analyze it and to see how it goes. <laughs> so it is very <laughs> much just like the, ah, so that is what the missionary position people talk about is. Very interesting, very interesting. Can mm. you show me what downward doggy means now? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, yes, interesting, Vake. Now, on your knees, I want to see what a breeding kink is from the other side. <laughs> Oh no. Um so do you Moving think on, he has a know. breeding kink? Is that what you're saying about Teach? <laughs> Teach. Teach has certainly got tenure. But um he's uh god in his supports with Robin, like in their C support, he is uh canonically perving mm -hmm. on um people like I think he's perving on like um God, just he's just being a perv. I don't remember exactly the circumstances. Yeah, I don't like that, TBH. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It, it it's the only time it's ever brought up. Other than that, I think he's mostly a switch. But like a little like, bit, a, a little bit of toxicity that he's getting over, I guess. The toxic switch. Definitely. The pervy, the pervy purview. He definitely has a like a really high opinion of himself. I mean. I feel like we I get that just from the battle quotes too. Like mm. let me school ya. Teach got tenure. Yeah, he's very he's very full of himself. I don't know how exactly like you would probably be like, you know, middle of sleeping with him and he would be like, Oh yeah, it's teaching time or some <laughs> something stupid. Let me like teach you a new move. <laughs> <laughs> he he would try to say something like that. Um, you know who else would try to say something like that? Virian, who is definitely a bottom bitch. Oh, I was gonna say that he's a top. Uh, right. okay, so this is interesting. I would like to hear your argument first, and then I'll present mine. Um, I think my argument for it is that he's very much, like, he's very much, like, a lady chaser. Mm hmm Like, he has some, like, sweet supports, but I think once- he's kind of like, um, I have the same idea for, uh, Sylvain. Where it's like he can talk the talk, the talk or whatever, like he can say all the smack he wants to, but when you actually get into bed, he's like, "Okay, now, um, tie me up, please." You know, like, actually, like, that aligns a lot with what I was gonna say, um, with the exception of that I thought that he would top despite wanting to bottom because of his like nobility stuff, and so I think that that ends up putting him in bottom regardless of what he does i just thought yeah. that he would think it's like beneath him to be tied up because he's like i am the archiest of archers i am the the noble man you can't do that to me well i mean then again he see a shirsh shirsh pull out the how do you pronounce that name does anyone know uh i don't know church okay we're just gonna get church we'll, we'll, we'll fuck the church we're gonna go with shirsh um but then again, he sees, like, Shersh pull out the strap on, and he's like, okay, yeah, you got it. Is this <laughs> also part of their canonical support? 
Um, I'm God, just, I I'm wish. taking that your word for it. <laughs> um, I could say anything I want. Um, I haven't seen their support in a while. I've mostly paired Virian with Olivia because I think it um, it just makes sense in my head. Eep. Eep. Yeah. Um, she's a bottom, by the way. I don't think we need to deliberate on that. I don't think we do either. Um, and <laughs> so they were both bottoms. <laughs> exactly. It's a um, miracle that uh, Anigo was managed to be born in the first place. But Shirsh is a top, would... right? Like, going back Shirsh to that is, relationship? Shirsh is definitely a top. I just want to say, anyone who is brave enough to wear the outfit she is wearing with, like, that open back while you are riding a fucking dragon, I think that is definitely someone who, like, is confident enough to top in bed. No, I see that. Um, I think her son is a switch, however. Um, I don't particularly care about Batman. Um, what are your opinions on him? Uh, I, I use him fairly frequently, uh, despite the fact that like his paralogue is, is frustrating. Um, I use him fairly frequently, and I think that he is... So, like, he's got that, like, dark and brooding, like, oh, I am Batman situation going on. Um, which initially feels like, on the surface, it should be Ace, because... Like, oh, I'm too dark and Shadow the Hedgehog pill to do any sort of sex. <laughs> um, but I don't think that that, like, it's obviously a front that he's putting on, right? And I think that the support he has with Lucina is incredibly sweet at the end. And sort of the idea of, like, them both, the uh, you know, the idea that he taught her to put on the mask and she's sort of teaching him to take it off. Um... And that they both sort of, like, hide their feelings around everyone else, but they're the only two that they can truly be themselves around. Uh, and I think that his self, without the mask on, is a switch. Uh, just because of vibes. Just because of vibes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about, um... I don't even know his name. I can't remember off the top of my head. Ge uh, Gregor? I think, no, Gregor's the, Gregor's the Gen 1. It's Gawain, I think? I always uh, get, no, I think, I always I think get his Jerome. name mixed up with Gregor's. Jerome, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's Jerome. Um, it's because they're all like Arthurian knight-based names, and so I get them mixed with each other. I said Gregor. Do we want to move on to Gregor, like the coolest dude? Uh, yeah, I think Gregor tops. Is Gregor time? <laughs> exactly. Like, he's... He, he's the kind of person that would say that, like, it's like, oh, it's Gregging time, that he would Greg over greg all over his partner but i also think he's a very i think he's very gentle mm -hmm. like, like like i think he's very gentle he's very nice in bed like he is de definitely someone who's like oh is too tight or oh do i need to adjust collar things like that did you know that gregor isn't his real name uh no i actually didn't uh what is his real name i don't remember what his real name but gregor is his brother's name who died and he like stole his brother's identity because of like this weird convoluted situation but like gregor is he's not gregor is not gregor gregor's brother was named gregor and gregor stole gregor's brother's name because it was like a cooler name or something uh and what? then he feels like incredibly guilty about it i forget which support chain it is that he goes into this um but it is like such a wacky detail to be hidden behind just a support chain, like an A, an a AS support chain thing. Um, I fucking love it. I love this character so much. Uh, like oh he's just God. the best part of Awakening. It's it's in his support with Tharja. <laughs> right, right, right. She's like trying to right because she's trying to curse him, and it doesn't work. None of her curses work because she's annoyed by him, and none of her curses work because she's using the wrong name. And he's like, well, you can't curse me because I'm not Gregor. That's my brother. I stole his name. <laughs> I for yeah. Oh okay. It's it's so it's I fucking love this guy. Um, I've, I've never had Tharja and Gregor be like remotely close to each other. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> um, so Tharja, Tharja on the topic of Tharja. Um, I feel like like this d probably doesn't need elaborating on. Right. Like her entire relationship with Robin. Um, her entire relationship with Robin is like, ooh, yes, anything you want, daddy, any dark choice of things. And Robin's over here like, what prom, the fuck? prom, get the fly swatter. Uh, I, I love how, like, in most of her S supports, she's just like, 
Just so you know, even though we're married, I'm still going to lick Robin's boots twice a week. And her partners are like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, because, um... Just, just, just remember, kid, whatever the golf girl says, go for it. <laughs> Awakening and Fates, when it comes to, like, characters with flaws getting married and then their spouses just being entirely supportive of it, is, um, certainly an approach that they took. Uh, speaking of flawed characters, uh, Stahl is nothing but flawed. Uh, because he's worthless and he's garbage. <laughs> and I hate him. Honestly, I, 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 I hate this guy so much. The stall is so average, I don't know how to rate him because he doesn't have a fucking personality. I honestly don't know what to say about him. He feels like, more like the player avatar in his supports than Robin does. Like, so doesn't. many of his supports are, you know how, like, the most boring supports in Engage are, like, Alir or, like, what not, or, like, Byleth in Three Houses because it's mostly just one character doing their character trait and Byleth being a blank slate or Alir being a blank slate. Stall is that they... more than Robin is. Like Robin is a tactician and Stall is the blank slate. Stall is someone who I, I honestly just just make a tier called Stall tier. We don't need to elaborate. <laughs> we just make Stall tier. Stall tier. What does he do? <laughs> I'll put him in switch under the similar logic to Robin. I think. I don't want to make mean... Stall tier. <laughs> I'll make I'll make Stall tier. I'll make Stall tier. Stall tier. <laughs> stall tier. Because I, I, I seriously, because he's just so average that it's like, wh what do we rate that metric on? He gets purple now. Uh, Stall tier. Uh, um, Sully, on the other hand, I do really like his red counterpart. The the good unit. The, well, no, she's painfully <laughs> mediocre, but so is everyone in the early game. That's fair. Um, I'd put her in top. Yeah. Um, part of that is definitely the butch energy that she puts forth, but um. I think that she's like, so she is, my read on Stahl, or sorry, on Sully is, I don't think that she's queer, um, despite the like high butch energy that she has. I think that she's just a really butch heterosexual woman, uh, and I think she brings that sort of top energy with that. Yeah, I mean, I've never really, there are like parts of the Awakening cast that I do see as like homosexual, like I think that... For instance, Robin and Crom, but especially male Robin, they're definitely smooching. I think Lucina's probably bi. I think there are like options out there, but I, I don't. I think Soli is very, like, she's very confident about herself mm -hmm. as a woman. She doesn't like feel the need to like fall into any like stereotype because like in her support with Rickon. Oh, the uh, trans like, potion. Yeah, the trans potion. Yeah, the the trans potion. Everyone knows about that at this point. Well, why but don't we're, you we're, tell the people who don't know though, just in case? Well, so basically, in their um, Rick in the Rick and uh, Soli, I think it is B support. Rickon is like, hey, um, uh, fuck, I forgot her name. Uh, hey, Soli, I've heard that you've been having issues with people respecting you because of the way you present yourself, and I know that that bothers you. Here's a potion to um, uh, uh you'll make yourself into a man. And she's like, no, nah, I like myself the way I am. It's just that those people get on my nerves. Well, because, like, she complains about misogyny, right? And he's like, oh, here's yeah. the solution to misogyny. Be a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Rickon is a child and not very smart. <laughs> he's a little bit dinky. That hat does not hide a brain. Um, speaking of people who hat. are not very smart, uh, the cunning tactician, Exilus. Um, I Put think this salt. guy's creepy. I don't like him. Um, Put him in salt here. <laughs> he's installed here. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the spider, said the fly. <laughs> God, I want to put him off a cliff. So, fun fact about that, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember exactly, I'm pretty sure he shares the same voice actor as Marth. Oh, Marth Fire Emblem? Marth Fire Emblem, yeah. Uh, is where it, do you it... think Marth ends up? Like, I, I think Marth is definitely a bottom, because Sita pegs the shit out of him. I was actually about to say, see the pegs are like sh ever loving shit out of him. So I think he goes here. Yeah. Um, it's so cool. It is weird that they brought back Marv to not do anything with him. After, I mean, like, he's there for like the first half of the story, but then Awakening kind of like forgets about all of the cool stuff they introduced in the first half of the story. <laughs> so I think it makes sense. Yeah. It is like, weird. I think, he, I think he and Lucina would have gotten along pretty well because she adores him. Yeah, I think they probably would have like uh, just been besties. 
Speaking of people I adore, um, Sumia. That's this one, right? Yeah, that's that one. Uh, I think Sumia's definitely a bottom. Oh, absolutely. She's got that, yeah. like, cute, klutzy thing going on. Um, yeah. I wonder how much she's, like, actually clutch and how much she, like, plays it up for Krom specifically. Um, I mean, their entire support chain revolves around her baking pies for him, and that's how he's, like, seduced. That's actually really sweet. It, it, it is it, it is a pretty sweet chain, I'll give it that. Um, yeah, that's that's cute. I like that. I think I like this interpretation for her as well. Um, someone who likes things that are baked and sweet, Gaius. Uh, where do you where do you think that Mr. Candyman belongs? Um, let me think. I don't really care a lot about Gaius. Me neither. I think he's one of the worst <laughs> units in the game. I don't want to put him in stall tier though because that would be mean. Yeah, especially because like he's a he's a fan favorite character. Like, he came back in Fates, so like people like him. I just I don't use him. It's one of these things where like if a unit is really bad, uh, Awakening supports don't really entice me to dive into the supports. And if a unit's really bad and I don't use them because Awakening is a hard game, uh, I kind of just don't get experience with their supports. I mean, I think that he like he definitely. I mean, I I probably put him in switch. Yeah, um, so I can see an argument for Top in terms of, like, him just wanting the gifts of candy and stuff, but also the obsession with candy is kind of like a bratty bottom behavior, so I think yeah. Switch could fit in either. Yeah, he, TBH. He has a bit of a, like, his entire support chain with Pan, if I'm, like, remembering correctly, he's, like, very adamant about, like, you know, oh, I'm gonna find this fucking candy that the tag will eat, and then he gets stuck in a tree, and he's like, help me, Pan, help me, and Pan's like, you fucking moron. Speaking of Pan, um, and also her son, I want to talk about them, because I think this is probably a hot take, uh, but I think Pan is ace, and I think that she specifically gets married, and I think she's Aero ace. Uh, and I think that she specifically gets married and has sex out of a duty to continue the race because she's the last of the Taogu. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she doesn't, doesn't want the bloodline to die with her. I was actually going to say something similar, except for Yarn. I think Yarn is definitely a bottom. Yeah. But I think that, I, I think that definitely um, Panna it sees one of those things of like, oh, this is my duty. I have to do this because, you know... Um, Awakening has a genocide in it that, um, well, two genocides, actually, that... Yeah, wasn't it, like, Krom's dad did it, too? Uh, so, Krom's dad goes into Plagia on, like, a holy crusade and kills a bunch of people trying to prevent the rise of, uh, Grima. Mm -hmm. And it did not go very well for either nation, because it was, like, a really long, drawn-out war. Yeah. Which is also why Yulise doesn't have a standing army, because, um... Everyone died. Yeah, pretty much, and there's a lot of people, like, working the fields. And then, uh, like, didn't Kromstad also genocide the bunnies, or...? Um, no, I think the bunnies were genocided by different people. I don't think it was Krom's dad. I can't remember. It's so, like... It's so frustrating, because there are aspects of Awakening's lore that are have a lot of, like, interesting and dark stuff in there. Like, the evil nation is evil in part because, like, Krom's dad was such a piece of shit right yeah um and it's the the, re the reason gangrel like has pre the reason gangrel is so fucked up in the first place is because he's probably a genocide survivor yeah but then we run into the situation of like the story just like does nothing with these interesting aspects uh and also just completely goes off the rails about a third of the way through and it, it makes me sad uh because i also just i love the idea of it being in arcanea thousands of years in the future um, hmm. and sort of being like, oh, I recognize this place, I recognize this place, whoa, we went over to Valentia, but now it's called Valm, and like, but then they just sort of like, I don't know, it's very frustrating. I could go into a whole rant about Awakening Story, but instead, I'm gonna use the fact that we talked about Gangrel to talk about Gangrel. Um, uh, I think Gangrel, by the, I, I don't really know how to rate Gangrel, I haven't seen a lot of his support, so going off story, he gives off very toxic top energy to me. I, I was gonna say toxic top. I didn't know that he had supports. I thought he was one of those like non-canon spot cast character things. So he is the spot pass characters have supports with Robin and Robin. That's it. So they're just Robin sexuals? 
Yes. And it's stupid. That is stupid. That is, is that is even the so like the other Robin sexuals like Sairi and Tiki have like some supports with each other, right? Like they don't get the full everyone yeah. treatment that everyone else does. Um, like Sairi and Tiki have a support chain, and they're definitely boning. They're definitely girlfriends. No, absolutely. I'm actually like planning an SRPG Sapphics video about that because uh, it's just let's, a very cute support chain. Let's go. Um, um, I think and- Tiki is the top though. I think Tiki is definitely a top. I think Sayri is definitely a bottom. Oh, she you think so? Her, yeah, I, I think so, because her entire support chain is like, oh, Lady Tiki, you're doing something indecent. Oh, Lady Tiki. And, and Tiki's just like, Tiki, look at my cute little dragon. I was going to put them both in top, but uh, I I have not dove enough into the support chain, so I'll take your word for it. Um, yeah. Where do you think her brother ends up, though? Her, like, ha, huh, yes, I am the Camus, uh, but I don't have proper motivation. I think this is, like, <laughs> the the dumbest instance of a Camus. Um, yes, I let me that... fight against and kill my sister in order to save my sister's life. What? <laughs> Listen, as much as I love Awakening, I will not defend <laughs> the story after, <laughs> like, Gengirl dies. Because a- a- after that point, it just becomes a wild wasteland of fucking story ideas. It's um, so wacky. Yin Fei, I-, I don't know what to say. He's not a good character. He's not interesting. He's, He's- just poorly written. <laughs> yeah, he is. He has, a- he, has a- he has a pretty cool design, though, and I will give him that. They like, did not do the work for his motivation. I- we could put him in stall tier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's put him in stall tier. <laughs> He's just in stall tier. <laughs> <laughs> uh wallhart is not stall tier though wallhart is like the toxic top of all time wallhart is the kind of person that you walk into the bedroom and he is and like he you, he removes his armor to reveal like a full like latex dominatrix suit he has it on the whole time exactly um you want to know why hammers and horse slayers aren't effective against him because you don't have rubber slayers baby you don't have rubber slayers <laughs> don't have rubber slayers <laughs> no, no he's, he probably prefers leather over rubber let's be real here like he's that kind of guy he's got like a synthetic half re- leather half uh like half latex half leather gimp suit underneath there oh. but like <laughs> not gimp isn't like he's still he tops in the gimp suit he tops exactly. in the gimp suit. He tops in the gimp suit. He just immediately, like, he steps on your face, uh, and he's like, You are into this! <laughs> yeah, at that point. Um, Cervantes is into that, by the way. Cervantes is into that. <laughs> Cervantes Listen. is into that. He likes Cervantes. getting the, the dirt in his mustache. He does. <sighs> What a fucking character. He's so... <laughs> I'm honestly <laughs> sad that, fun. like, they did all the stupid, like, recruit the various bad guys shitty spot pass stuff, and you don't get Cervantes. Like, that actually makes me sad. I would do the Cervantes paralog to get Cervantes. You can't recruit Cervantes because his mustache is too powerful. It would obliterate Grima. At least Cervantes is in Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. <laughs> God, that's right, he is. <laughs> Which is which is actually just so great for him. Yeah, th- there's a lot of um, minor awakening bosses they have in there for some reason. Like they have him a uh, the um, Valkyrie boss. Uh, what's her face? Her personality. Oh trait is- yeah, who's like her personality trait is just that she is woman, and that she likes um, Walhart. I don't remember what, but I remember when playing TMS, which I need to get back to. Um, no, you I don't. Her- <laughs> yeah, I, no, I don't. I have better things to do with my time. I remember her being a really tough boss for no reason. (laughs) I just remember that, like, I beat the final boss and, like, therefore beat the game. And it was like, now there's an epilogue where you can learn what happens in the end of the story. And I was like, no thanks, and I turned it off. That's fair. Um, Uh, Speaking of ridiculously hard bosses in Tokyo Mirage sessions, um, Averse is definitely also, like, a Dami Mami type person. Yes, she is very... Like, she dresses the part. Um, She doesn't have to take her armor off because she wears the armor while stepping on your face. Exactly. Um, She's probably into, like, fucking tome usage or whatever, like, during sex. Like, oh, oh, shit. You know that that tome that, like, makes people naked from Fates? Yeah, Aversa Um, invented that. (laughs) Aversa used it on herself from her character design. (laughs) True, true. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of a character design moment, um, I don't I don't have anything from there. So instead, this is who she steps on. <laughs> like, <laughs> no! Wait, no, 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 no. Because that's her adoptive dad. Wait, what? Yes. I didn't know that. I don't pay attention to Awakening Story. Uh, quick, quick. Here. He's ace. In- He's ace. He doesn't care about anything but Grima. <laughs> there, yeah, I fixed it. There is no incest. This is not FE4. This is Arcanea in the future, not Judd Girl in the future. That would be a pretty cool game, though. <laughs> like, yeah, he pretty much like treats her like a daughter. That, that's her entire like reason for joining. Is she regains her memories to learn that she was like manipulated by ga- um not Gangrel um Valabar. Valabar. <laughs> I thought they were like, married. Like, I thought she was like his queen. Uh, no, that would be, like, uh, her relationship with Gang Girl. Uh, okay. I, because, um, like, Valabar takes over after Gang Girl dies, and I thought that they were, like, okay. No, they I mi- Look, you can't blame me, because I fix Awakening Story by doing this cool trick where you hit the start button. <laughs> That's fair. Um, which is part of why, like, Fina, is that her name? Uh, the Pegasus who dies saving Emerin is someone no. who I just have, like, no knowledge of. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I forgot her name, but it's not Fina. Um, hold on, let me check the Thabe server, because she's recruitable in Project Thabes, what's her name? I feel like she should have been recruitable, uh, but obviously oh, then they, like, killed her, so she shouldn't. Um, uh, but she, uh, before they killed is. her, I thought she was she... gonna be, like, the, the third member of the Triangle Attack. Project, yeah, um, so Project Thabes, I'm pretty sure, yeah, let me check. Her name is Phila. Phila. Phila, yeah, and, um... She, her, yeah, she, was, she has unused critical cut-in assets, so she was probably meant to be playable at some point, but they axed her for some reason. Yeah, I mean, like, I think it was effective. Like, a surprise, she shows up to save Emeryn, and then they both end up getting killed. Um, yeah. I do want to say I think they're a couple, uh, but, like, secretly, yeah. because I think Elise is a little bit homophobic, and, like, the queen can't out herself as being gay. Yeah, sure, we could... I mean, she definitely hides it. I think they're definitely, like, fucking behind each other's back. Speaking of that character, um, Emeryn, what do we think of Emeryn? Let's rank them together. Let's rank the girlfriends. I think... Ace Switch situation. Mm, I, I think this is that. an Ace Switch situation. Um, I think that Emeryn... But she's not, like, a sex repulse ace. I think this is, like, a, uh, a situation where she's like, yeah, you know, I'll... If my wife is horny, you know, gotta, gotta, gotta fuck the wife. Exactly. Like, like, I think she's a lot more into, like, platonic. Like, she really loves and, like, enjoys everyone's company around her. She's definitely, like, a very, like, nice, sweet person. But in the end, like, sex isn't, like, a major deal to her. It's not, like, something she, you know, necessarily enjoys unless it's with someone she really loves. Mm-hmm. And she does really love, not Fina, Phila? Phila? Phila. Fill out these nuts! Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, Alright, so, um... Speaking of Pegasus Knight, uh, Cynthia, what do we think of Cynthia? Uh... I mean, she's very head-empty. Yeah. She, uh, doesn't she, like, try to kill Krom because she thinks that the other guy is Krom? Yes. That's, like, her big thing. Is she's just kind of, she just kind of goes with the flow, head empty. Um, I guess maybe that's switch behavior, but I don't know. Mm. I don't know if there's really enough to go off her. I might put her in ace. I don't think she really cares about sex. I'll, I, I buy that. I buy that. Um, she's more about like, doesn't she want to be like a big hero or something? Yeah, she wants to be a hero, but um, Fate Awakening has cringe gender restrictions on classes, so she can't even be one. Oh, that's actually that's actually tragic. It is. But Selena is literally an Awakening character, and she's wait no, wait no. a mercenary hero, bow knight. Wait no. In what was I thinking of? Oh wait no. Oh, wait no. What was I thinking of? Uh, I don't think Fates. she has access to the classes. I'm just stupid. No, 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 no. I I think you're right that it's like cringe gender lock. It's just like. No, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm not right, I remember now, because Selena can't mean Severa, that's her actual name. Severa can be uh, 
a hero. It's just that Cynthia doesn't have access to the hero class. Oh, wait, but what if we... Can she... Oh, right, no, because her mom's in the weird situation where, like, she can only support certain people. She gets, like, Krom, Frederick, and, like, one other dude. She's, like, yeah, the one awakening girl who's not a Robin sexual who has restricted marriages. Because, like, um, she can't marry Gregor. Oh, that's so tragic. Robin, Guy, Henry, Krom, Frederick. Oh, and the head... Oh, that's extra frustrating because Henry could have given fighter hero to Cynthia, but because of awakening sexism, fighter is a male-only class. Oh, that's, that's so sad. True. It is. She can't even be the hero she wants to be. It's actually so tragic. Laszlo can be the hero he wants to be, though. Um, yes. And I like Laszlo. I think he's he's the switch of all time, though. He definitely is. Like, he's just... He's here for the ladies, and uh, he doesn't care what form that takes. I mean, I can definitely see him getting the, like, shit pegged out of him, but, like, he, deep down, he is, like, someone who's, like... He deeply cares about everyone around him. His easygoing attitude is because, you know, he lived in the, um, uh... End of the world? Yeah. Apocalypto. And, yeah, and, like, his entire, like, easygoing personality is, like, a front he puts up. Deep down, he is, like, a really, like, deep, caring, loving person, as we see in, um, uh, Fates, where that's expanded on a bit more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, do we want to talk about the third Fates person, since we already talked about Severa? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Radiant Dawn. Um, let's see. What? Uh, so that's a thing he yells out. He yells out game titles. That's uh certainly interesting. Uh, bottom. You think he's a bottom? I think he's a bottom. I think he gets very flustered very easily. I was gonna say ace, but I'll I'll defer to the awakening expert. Yeah, I mean, I think he very easily gets like flustered he definitely is someone who gets like very passionate about things like super easily like he gets really into like whatever partner he's dating or whatever but he like is very easily flustered like you tease him a little bit and he's like blushing into like a puddle is that just like a myrmidon trait then because that's also like long q's whole thing in addition to just being like terrified of women because he's gay he's definitely gay his boyfriend's name is fake so then I guess, yeah, he would have to be a bottom then. Um, yeah. Because Teach is going to teach him, you know, all the rules. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, this is getting a bit tricky. Um, I think, think Kellum is probably a switch. Like, the default is Ace because, like, oh, you know, haha, didn't notice him there. Haha, <laughs> uh, uh, it's 2014 and I still think this joke is funny. Haha. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that... He's more like, if anything, I feel like it's the desperation that drives him to switch to him. He's like, nobody wants anything to do with me because nobody thinks I'm there. Please, I'll do anything. Yeah. I mean, I think I was actually going to put him in bottom over that. I mean, factually, first I was going to, oh, ha, 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 who's that character joke? But I decided that wasn't funny. <laughs> it's not. People, <laughs> Fire Emblem community drive jokes into the ground, and the Kellum one has been driven into the ground since day fucking one. Hee hee ha ha, guys, look, no one can see where Kellum is. Hee hee ha ha, barbecue at Belhalla. The only ha -ha. time, the only time the Kellum joke was ever funny, um, was a accidental time. I was, um, trying to get the Kellum picture for a thumbnail, and a Choose Your Heroes, Fates, Gotcha, whatever fucking thing it's called, w was up. So I was like, oh, I'll just, like, download the picture from there, right? So I logged on to the to the Choose Your Heroes, Choose Your Legends um, thing, and I clicked on Kellum. And because I was in an area with bad cell service, it said, this is the hero you've selected. And then it had the icon for the image failed to load. And then it said Kellum. And I was like, this is, like, the one time that joke has ever been funny and it wasn't a person making it. It was just, like, God itself making it. Um, and so I screenshotted it because I was like, this is... This is the bad joke everyone tells, but it's actually funny this time. Um, and other than that, it's literally never been funny. 
And I can't even take credit for that because that wasn't me telling that joke. It was just the universe telling that joke to me. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think Basilio and Flavia are both tops. And they were both tops. It's the Beyblade moment. Exactly. You see the here, Froxy we, way. I want them next own. to each other. Here, Tiki and Good not here. I want them next to each other. I like them together as a couple. The Feroxy way is um, you have to fight each other to see who bottoms for the night. Oh. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I feel like that needs no elaboration. I like that. Exactly. Um, I think Kajel goes... Uh, Kajel? Um, I don't know how to pronounce name. that name. I think it's an Irish name. Uh, so it's probably like... Uh, I, I don't know. Sully's I think she goes daughter. A. Yeah, I think she goes an ace. I can see it. I think uh, they have a lot of that. Henry as well. I think he likes to murder more than fuck. Yeah, I, I would agree on that. He's just the murder hobo. I think Maribel gives off very um bottom energy. Because um okay, I like her um I'm gonna have to bring up Lisa for this because I do like her and Lisa together. Mm hmm Because um like, her entire, like, A support with Lisa was her, like, okay, as a child, I had no friends, and you were, like, the only person who was ever nice to me. And Lisa's like, oh, yeah, I just do that because I want to. And, and she like, just, like, they, can't conceptualize that. Yeah. Because, like, everyone looked down at, on her as a child because, like, her house got ruined or whatever, mm -hmm. something like that. Which is why she's kind of so haughty and so aggressive towards the Avatar at first, because she is just very, like pretty much ready to be, you know, berated for something silly. No, I can uh, see that. Uh, and then mm -hmm. Libra... Where do we want to put him? Um, I mean, I think if we want to cheat, we can say, like, member of the church, vow of chastity, but I don't think that Elise has, like, the vow of chastity thing. I mean, he can have children. He definitely fucks. He um, does fuck. Think... He's, he's a part of that trope where it's like, my entire squad is dead, but I must move on. And I think that's kind of top energy. I get it. Um, mm. Yeah, I can see that. I I would rather focus on that aspect of him than, like, the weird semi-transphobic stuff about how, like, everyone thinks he's a girl. Haha, ha, isn't this funny? Yeah, because um, Awakening writers decided to have no holds barred regarding anything in Awakening. I mean, to be fair, that was they do the same thing with Lucius. Um, it's a, it's a not uncommon shitty thing that they do in Fire Emblem. It's not just the crime of Awakening, it is the crime of Fire Emblem. Um, but this is the list that we ended up with. Uh, hopefully this list is not a crime of Fire Emblem. Um, um I don't really think there's anything else I want to add that's kind of all my thoughts on it. I do, uh, I, I think that this is actually, uh, you know, I made the disclaimer at the beginning that everyone else's, uh, fan canons are perfectly acceptable, but, uh, I've changed my mind. This is the definitive list, um, and you know if you disagree, we'll send you to the stall tier. You don't so, want to get sent to the stall You don't, don't want to get sent to the stall tier? The stall tier is the tier of bad writing. <laughs> the stall tier is the tier of stall. <laughs> oh, this is so sad. But you know who definitely didn't get sent to the stall tier? My patrons! So thank you to Gameboo, Firent, Cordelia Frey, Smaz Ruby, Jamie Collins, Marin Karen, Thick Molder, George Grenville, the 7th PM, Daniel Kalaskis, Jagan is Nest, Tailored Muffin, Herc, SUP, Caius Cole, Gabe the Green, Control Alt Ages, Jeff, Autumn Kelsey, and TB for your financial support. I especially appreciate it in times like this. If you are interested in joining the Patreon, there is a link below. However, bear in mind that the credits will not be updated while I'm out of town, so they won't be updated for a couple of weeks. Regardless, I hope that everyone has a wonderful day. Stay safe, gamers, alright?